Cytopep presents the Spaceship Zero Adventure Hour. Chapter 1, The Crew Assembles. Space Corp. HQ, on the forefront of human space exploration. 1600 hours. Brilliant rocket scientist Professor Cornelius Ashton discusses his better-than-light drive with Heidi Mensa, Space Corp. executive. Miss Mensa, I feel I must reiterate that there is absolutely no need for a human pilot during this phase of testing. The better-than-light drive doesn't need any rocket jockey to correct course. All foreseeable adjustments can be made by myself or my robot. Adding superfluous humans only serves to introduce an unwanted X-factor into my careful calculations. Ashton, English is not my first language, but there is one word I'm very familiar with. Culpable. Now, heaven forbid, should anything go wrong with this test flight, there will be a serious inquiry into who is responsible. Now, who do you think... Oh, come in. Guten Tag, Captain Stackhouse. Make yourself comfortable. I was just fixing myself a drink. Can I get you one? You know damn well I quit drinking two years ago. Do you really need to start this meeting off with a square block, round hole, trained ape test? It's in my shareholder's best interest to affirm your resolve hasn't slipped, Captain. For the record, I never doubted you. I was always convinced the man who led the Mars colonization mission of 2012 would have no trouble keeping his demons in check. Can we save the banter for later and move on to business? I still have 30 hours of checklists to oversee. Captain Glenn Starkos, may I present the tenacious, rather intelligent and frequently impatient Professor Cornelius Ashton. Good to meet you, Professor. I can't wait to get that newfangled engine of yours out for a quick tour of the Big Empty. Hmm, I see. I expect you'll be treating the better-than-light drive with more gravitas once you're at the helm of a vessel with the device installed. I fear by your tone you regard this operation as some kind of hot-rodding time trial, and that you have no doubt already fantasized bragging about it to your mates down in the officer's mess. What you fail to appreciate is that the BTL drive can allow a vessel to span great distances in the blink of an eye. The whole apparatus works by manipulating the gravitational forces... Yes, uh, thank you, Professor, for the lesson on the device we've all been working on for the past three years. Glenn, how are preparations coming for tomorrow's flight? Spanner and his team are performing the last of the Level 3 diagnostics. He's informed me that he'll be done by 2200 hours. We'll be ready to launch on schedule. Good. I'll let the board of directors know. Be at the shuttle dock at 0500 hours for the transport to the orbital science platform. Roger that. I'll be in my quarters if you require my attention on anything further. Or if you feel the need to crank up the gravity on anything else from my official record. I can already tell that it will be more productive to have that man stored in the deconstitutor than it will to have him stumbling around my equipment and interfering... Professor, we have invested billions into your work. And although the board is impressed with the preliminary results, I am still not convinced that you or your little device is worth all the hubbub. And don't think for a second that anyone has forgotten that you currently owe Space Corp a rather significant dollar value. It is my intention to personally guarantee that you, sir, will make good on your part of the contract. I strongly suggest that you learn to play nice with all the parties involved, including Glenn Stackhouse. Are we clear, Professor Ashton? Yes, ma'am. Hand over the backups from today's computations, delegate what remaining tasks you can to the robot and crew, and prepare yourself for tomorrow's shuttle flight. Space Corp to all cadets! Come in, cadets! Exploring the galaxy is hard work. Isn't it time for a Vitopep break? Vitopep will help put that spring in your step, a gleam in your eye, and give you all the confidence you need to tell the Sandman to take a powder until tomorrow. Vitopep is scientifically manufactured to give you maximum power. Filled with more sugars, nutrients, and chemical molecules, Vitopep comes in three fantastic flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and red. Kids, ask your mom to look for it at your local grocers. Get ready to blast off with Vitopep! Space Corp orbiting science platform, low Earth orbit, 2150 hours. Engineer Stuart Spanner and his assistant Gearbox perform last-minute adjustments to Spaceship Zero's Xenon Jets. 
pass me that torque wrench there, would you, Gearbox? Great jumping space catfish, Spanner. I'm never gonna get through the deconstitutor checklist if you keep sending me to go for tools for you. If that Poindexter's gizmo sends them a billion miles off course, they may need this deconstitutor unit to get back to Earth before their pets die of old age. <laughs> I take it you don't have very much faith in this better than light drive. They say if it works, it'll open up new possibilities in long range space travel. I just hope it'll mean I finally get paid for all the overtime I'm owed from accounting. <laughs> well, you got a point, son. You have a point. But my old grandpappy used to tell me space credits can't buy the important things in life. Did I ever tell you about my grandpappy, Agnew Spanner? He really understood the value of making time for friends and family. After all, life just whizzes by you like a comet these days. I remember one time the two of us were on a cargo run from low Earth orbit station Alpha to the lunar base on the shadow side. Stu, you know I love to hear you jet space gas about your grandpappy. But why don't we save the story time for tomorrow, when we're back from the test flight? Listen, I've got to get me some shut-eye. These low-orbit hours are killer on my insomnia, and this instant sunlight-in-a-box jalopy has never really cut it out for me. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Gearbox. You win. Go grab some rack time. I'm going to stay down here and get some last-minute checks in before I call it a night. After all, my grandpappy Agnew Spanner, he always said, measure twice, align your proton neural nets once. <laughs> sure he did. Good night, Stu. Good night. All right. Uh, one more look at the tape drives and we'll call it a day. Uh, hmm. That can't be right. I'll just run a quick level one diagnostic and we'll see that if it's not just a little light going on where it shouldn't. Well, I'll be the illegitimate son of a... That's the single most peculiar thing I've seen all orbit. Ah. <sighs> This whole system was ship shaped two days ago. Well, it looks like I'm busting out that checklist again for the. Damn it, Gearbox! <laughs> Go hit the rack, will you, cranky old salt? You're never gonna sneak up on me if you keep tripping over your own feet like that. Gearbox? Joke's up, old man. You'll have to try again tomorrow. Gearbox? Is that you? Oh my! Ah, ah, ah. What is the terrible fate of Chief Engineer Stu Spanner? Find out in the next exciting episode on the Spaceship Zero Adventure Hour, presented by Vitopep. <laughs>